I'm Andrew Olson. I'm 31 years old. I was born and raised in California, but currently live in Tucson, Arizona, and I love animals. While I have no formal training in any sort of zoology or biology, I took a few classes in college, uh, but primarily I've been self-educated. I love to read, and I've spent hundreds, if not maybe even thousands of hours now uh, trying to learn about uh, biology in general and the specifics of all the animals that I'm interested in. Um, primarily I like bugs, um, and of, out of bugs I'm most interested in native to the United States venomous predators, like giant centipedes, scorpions, and spiders. Um, it kind of makes me laugh because a, a number of people have told me you know, that I'm fearless when it comes to bugs, when in actuality I'm actually something of a consummate coward. Uh, what looks like fearlessness to some people is actually uh, the result of research. Um, I tend not to play with things that can kill me, and of the stuff I play with that people consider dangerous, it's usually more an issue of uh, very painful bites rather than, you know, potential like organic failure or anything like that. Um, so, don't actually consider myself fearless. I consider myself kind of willing to take acceptable risks to do something that I enjoy. So, in that vein, um, one of the things that I play with that most people uh, look pretty serious askance at are the giant centipedes. Um, partly, I was trying to find out what centipedes have a really bad uh, venom to them and what centipedes would be okay for someone starting out in the bug keeping hobby to uh, keep and not suffer horrible, horrible searing agony from. Um, so, I was at a barbecue with my local bug group in Southern California, and I saw one of my friends was playing with a uh, Thai jewel centipede. I let him know, hey, you know, that's probably got a really bad bite, you know, you should be careful, but, you know, he's an adult, so he can do what he wants. Well, a few minutes later, he walks up to me with this real funny look on his face, like I could tell something is wrong, and all of a sudden I see something slithering under his shirt, and of course it's the Thai jewel centipede that's gotten away from him and is now crawling around on his body, inside of his shirt. Um, the problem with that, there is almost certainly a difference between taking a bite to the extremity versus taking one to your trunk. It's more dangerous, essentially the closer to your heart it is, uh, the more dangerous it's likely to be. So, he asked me to help him out, and of course I did. So I very carefully lift his shirt up and see this thing kind of crawling down his back, so I scooped it off of him onto the ground with my hand. And then the thing I noticed, kind of poor planning on my part, the thing instantly starts heading toward, towards like a drain in the ground. So I tried to grab it, and it turned around and bit me, and uh, I knew it was not going to be fun. So, um, the interesting thing about centipede venom, it's not like a bee where it instantly starts to hurt. You've got 20 to 60 minutes before it really kind of kicks in, uh, at least for me. Um, so, you know, I, kind of upset. I had driven myself to this barbecue, and it was probably 45 minutes from my house, and <laughs> one of my other buddies says, hey, you know, I don't know if this works for centipedes, but for jellyfish, you can pee on it, and it, and it makes it better. And at this point, I'm like, you know, so what if I look silly? Like, if it works, that'd be awesome. We'd find something out. So, as it turns out, that doesn't help at all. Um, and that actually ended up being one of the most painful bites I ever experienced. Uh, for about three days it felt like, let's see, it got me on my left hand luckily, but it felt like um, 
I'd broken my wrist almost, somewhere between a really bad sprain and a, a break, and my whole hand and arm was quite swollen and uh, couldn't really type. Uh, my skin was very sensitive, and um, overall, it was pretty interesting and not really the way I had expected the uh, barbecue to go. I don't really do a lot of traveling when it comes to finding bugs. Um, when I started in the bug hobby, I was interested in the exotics, the big Indian tarantulas and South American centipedes and all that. But um, within just a, a couple years, really, I started being, becoming more and more interested in native stuff, stuff that's native to California or the United States. And so most of my travels were actually pretty, pretty close to home, and it, it, it was more a, a game of um, doing my research and finding out what should be there, and then repeatedly going into the wild uh, to find it. And um, you know, a lot of people are actually really kind of surprised to find out all the different. Uh, really cool bugs that actually live uh, all over the United States, and that kind of became my kind of driving goal was to show people in the United States how cool the bugs in the United States could be, and that was um, most of what my traveling was was in California. There's actually a lot of stuff that I like about animals. Um, Probably one of the bigger things is that I just love playing with them. I love getting to interact with them, um, and that's true for dogs, cats, snakes, you know, any animal. I like horses, uh, you know, really anything. Uh, the thing that I kind of see as a cost, though, are all the higher animals. Um, you really need to spend a, a fair amount of effort to take care of them correctly. You know, I certainly would never want to have an animal and have it suffer in my care. So a big attraction to bugs for me is that, um, you know, all, all my research has, has really strongly led me to believe that they don't really have feelings. Um, so they can't really suffer. They can't really feel pain. And so... Um, you know, it's a lot less sort of emotionally traumatic for me to have a scorpion die rather than, say, a pet cat or dog. And so I kind of get all the benefits of having uh, interaction with animals while sort of minimizing the cost to myself. Both uh, time-wise, you know, most of the bugs I keep are five minutes a week to take care of at most. Uh, versus, you know, something like a cat or a dog where you have to walk it, clean its poop up, and all that stuff. Um, so, man, basically, bugs are a really good compromise for getting to play with animals uh, and not have to worry about them overly much. I, I don't think I'm actually unreasonably afraid of any animals. Um, I'm more respect what I think is a realistic uh, likelihood and potentiality of being uh, injured by them. So, you know, I, I've seen bears in the wild. Um, yeah, of course, it's very exciting, but, you know, just the, the number of bear attacks in California is so low that it's just not very likely they're going to hurt me, so I've, you know, I wouldn't really say I'm afraid of them. Um, same thing with bugs, you know, I'm generally familiar with uh, their methods of attack and defense and, you know, can kind of decide, well, this bug can't really long-term damage me, so, you know, I'm not really afraid of that. Um, the one thing that uh, is kind of a risk when I'm flipping over rocks and looking for bugs are rattlesnakes, but again, I'm not really afraid of them. They're not out there to get you. They're just going to protect themselves, and you just need to be aware of, you know, that's a possibility. And just kind of make sure to be careful when you're flipping rocks over and stepping over logs and stuff like that. And, 
uh, I guess the animals you could say I'm afraid of are the ones I'm not familiar with. Um, you know, Steve Irwin, phenomenal knowledge about reptiles, and played with some of the craziest reptiles you could possibly imagine. He died from a stingray. It was kind of outside his area of expertise, and so that's actually a, a lesson I've taken from from him dying. Is you know you need to stick with what you what what you know and was, and let other people deal with the other animal.